Hello students, welcome to Legacy IS Academy. In today's video, we are going to discuss about the Jais al Adl terrorist group which has come into light after the attack of Iran on the Pakistani territory. Today, in the retaliation of this Iranian strike, Pakistan has also attacked over the Iranian territory. So, in this video, we are going to discuss in details about what are the issues, what are the flash points uh, along which India, Iran and Pakistan has been continuously fighting, not in the recent times, but also from the past. So, let us try to understand, first of all, the context, the background in which, uh, in which we are discussing this today's issue. So, Iranian missile and drones two days back has hit the targets in the Pakistan's Baluchistan province, which is a bordering province of Pakistan, having a border with the Iranian region of Sistan and Baluchistan. So, because of this attack, Pakistan has said that it reportedly demolished two key strongholds of Jais al Dhulm. Jais al Dhulm is the name uh, by how Iranians refer to the Jais al Adl terrorist group. So, Jais al Adl is referred in Pakistan, and same terrorist group is re referred as Jais al Dhulm in Iran. So, Pakistan and uh, against this particular strike has issued a very strong condemnation, and it has said that such kind of attacks or such kind of incidences are basically a violation or what we can call as unprovoked violation of Pakistan's airspace. And it says that attacks had resulted in the civilian casualty, especially it says that two innocent children, uh, basically two of the girls, innocent girls have been injured and have been killed as per the attack, a result of the attack. Now we talk about the attack itself, this we can look at the map, here we have the Pakistan, then on the north side, as you can see, the large part of Pakistan on the western side, it uh, having a border with Afghanistan, a small region is having border with Iran. Now, this region is the region where the Baloch cultural ethnic, ethnic group basically resides. This is called as Pakistani Baluchistan. And in the other side, you have the Sistan and Baluchistan, which lies in the Iran as well. The point of attack, as you can see on the map, is this one. So basically attacks took place in a town what is called as Panjugur. So Panjugur is a town somewhere in the Balochistan province of Pakistan to the, having a border with the Iran and a mosque which is situated, it is not a border area that is very close to border. If you look at the point of attack, the area of attack, so mosque about 50 kilometers inside the Pakistani border has been damaged as a result of this strike. Iran's semi-official news agency that is re referred as Tasneem, it has reported that the focal point of this operation was the region known as Koh Sabj, that is the Green Mountains. So basically this area where the Panjugur town is situated is also referred as the Green Mountain or Koh Sabj and it is recognized as one of the largest hubs for the Jais al Dhul militants. So let us try to understand briefly also about who are these militant groups, what are these militant groups and what are their objectives. So basically first we try to understand the term itself. Literal translation of the meaning of the word Jais al Adl can be Jais al Adl. Jais refers to the army and al Adl refers to of justice. That means the army who is, which is seeking justice, army which is fighting for justice. However, the actions of this group obviously is very contrast to what a justice seeker will try to achieve. So basically it is a Sunni Salafist militant group. Now we know that Islam uh, community itself has, uh, Islamic religion has been divided into two groups that is a Sunni and Shia. So basically it is a Sunni Salafist militant group with bases in Pakistan, Balochistan province, but they are also active in the mountainous border between Iran and Pakistan. They claim to be fighting for the objective of independence of Baloch people. As we have discussed, Baloch groups are scattered both along Pakistan side as well as along the Iranian side and they are fighting for the independence of the Sistan and Balochistan, which is also referred by them as Asli Balochistan province and they want to get it out from the clutches of Iran. The Jais al Adl have been launching attacks due to this precise reasons against Iran for a very long period of time, almost since last 10 years, that is 2013. And they have also claimed to have carried out bombings as well as kidnapped Iranian border guarding forces. Jais al Adl had, had attacked recently in December also, where Iranian media agency have reported that it resulted into the martyrdom of, martyrdom of almost 11 Iranian police forces or police force personnel. If you look at the roots of this particular terrorist group, so it is basically considered as an offshoot or an avatar of the older group, which was operating in the same area. That group was called as Zundala. 
So Junzar terrorist organization was based also in Pakistan and Balochistan. However, Jaisal Adil was founded by the former Jundalla leader itself, that is Abdul Malik Rigi, in 2002 or 2003. So Abdul Malik led the group until 2010. He was later on captured by the Iran and executed by the Iran itself. This group was also designated as a terrorist group by United States of America as well. Now, Iran considers both the Al, uh, the Jundalla terrorist organization groups as well as the current organization Jais al Adl to be uh, basically to be a terrorist organization and the leader of Baloch resistance in the Iranian territory of or Iranian province of the Sistan and Balochistan. The group's stated goals as we have discussed are again to basically secure the recognition of Baluchi culture, economic and political right. Basically the group believes that Iran in Iran the Baluchi people are suffering discrimination they are not given attention and that is why they are suffering from abject poverty. Thus, they are also being discriminated on the basis of their ethnicity. So, recognition of Baluchi cultural, economic and political right is the major goal from the Iranian government and also to spread the awareness about the plight of Baluchi people in the Iran. Now, resistance of Baluchi people both in Iran as well as Pakistan is not something new. Basically, Baluchi people are an ethnic group that is spread across the both countries in the province of Balochistan, Iran, Sistan and Balochistan province. So they speak a different kind of language as spoken in Iran or the other part of Pakistan. For example, in Pakistan also we talk about you have Punjabi, people who are speaking Punjabi, people who are speaking Sindhi languages, people who are speaking Pashto languages, Urdu languages, while Balochi people speak unique language that is Balochi. And they also boast of a unique cultural identity, which is very, very different, which they claim from the ethnic Persians, the Persian community, which is residing in the Iran or Pashtun, Sindhi and Pakistani people who are residing in Pakistan. And it is on this ground basically they are trying to have their own independent status. They also try to portray their voice as a unique voice. So currently there are about 7 million Baloch people living in Pakistan while roughly 2 million Baloch people are living in the Iran. So this makes them a minority group actually in both the countries and a highly marginalized one. Marginalized one means that we talk about this air of employment, the share of uh, their share in the in, in the uh, government offices or their share in the business, everything is very, very less and they are suffering from the abject poverty in that in the both countries. Now, if you talk about again in Iran, basically Sunni Baloch minority, especially after 1979 Islamic revolution, when Abdullah Khamenei led group uh, seized power from the Shah of Iran. After that, the Shia state, the theocratic state, which they have formed, they have basically caused numerous religious persecution of the Sunni Baloch minority group. Again, to remind you, we have Iran that is largely led by a Shia political organization, a Shia based political organization, while Baloch follow the Sunni form of Islam. Moreover, Sistan and Balochistan remains among, as you discussed, the poorest region of the country. That is why people here are also very much dissatisfied with the government. So anti-Iran Baloch militants have developed in Iran as well because of this kind of stepmotherly treatment that we can say. And they have long operated from the safe havens in Pakistan working in tandem obviously with the Pakistani Balochi insurgents. So Baloch issue since then at least since 1979 has always been in flashpoint, a flashpoint in Iran-Pakistan relations with either country accusing the other of fomenting tension on its soil. If you look at the map here as we were discussing. Here, this is the Pakistan. So, this region is the Pakistani Balochistan. Then, this is the border of Pakistan and Iran, and this region is called as Sistan Balochistan. So, basically, this yellow region that we are seeing on the map here is the area where almost 9 million Balochi people are residing. Now, as a reaction against Iran's attack on Pakistani soil, today Pakistan also has, uh, has, uh, has conducted a series of retaliatory strikes which was highly coordinated in nature against the terrorist hideout inside Iran which Pakistani claims. So, Pakistan government has also released a statement in this regard where it has says that it has already expressed a serious concern to Iranian counterpart about the safe havens and sanctuaries that the Pakistani terrorist organizations are enjoying in the Iran and they call themselves as a Sarma Chars. So, Sarma Chars are basically, uh, basically acting with full impunity through the Iranian territory, they are acting against the Pakistani interests, interests and the Iranian government is not taking any action against them. So, because of this region, Pakistan has decided to 
have a conduct uh, to conduct a retaliatory strike or coordinated strike means that obviously due to these incidences the diplomatic relationship between two countries have showered and as a result of that pakistan has decided to recall its ambassador from iran and also the iranian ambassador to pakistan who has been visiting his home country it is very much uh, this poss possible that he might not be returning back for quite some time now in the context of all this development that have been go that has been going on recently few uh, days back we can say indian external affairs minister s jaisankar was also on a visit to iran so basically the ministry of external affairs has given a statement in this regard where it has says that this is a matter between iran and pakistan however as far as india is concerned we have an uncompromising position of zero tolerance towards terrorism and thus we understand actions that countries take in their self defense now in this regard also the government of india and uh, the minister of Extern uh, external affairs minister has tried to put forward his point when he was visiting iran that the attack that is happening in the red sea region especially by the iranian backed houthi militias that should also be stopped as it is causing unnecessary danger and tensions in the maritime traffic traffic especially when large number or large volume of maritime tra uh, the straight traffic of india is coming via that so that is all about this particular video i hope you understood about the terrorist organization jaish al adl and how it has emerged as a flash point between iran pakistan relation and what has been the stand of india in this already that is all for this video thank you very much